All right, so pretty exciting things. Lots of things change pretty quickly in the world of Power Platform. A few weeks ago, I did a video on how you can add your Power Pages websites to solutions. Remember, we need to enable the new enhanced data model to do this. And then once we do this, we can add our site to a solution and export that and import it into another environment. If you're like me, you get a little bit lazy with those types of things and you want to begin to automate this. So yes, we can automate this deployment from our development to our production. But this time we're going to use the Power Platform Pipelines. If you've not played with Power Platform Pipelines yet, say that fast three times, definitely look into it. There's a lot of great documentation, other videos on that. I've added two deployment environments. I've added my development environment and my test environment. Um, into the ALM host environment that I'm using to run my power platform pipelines. So those have been added. Again, you're just going to need the environment ID and you can add those and we'll verify that. So we have that and then I've set up a pipeline to move solutions from my development environment to my test environment. Of course, you could have other downstream environments like staging or production. Of course, with power platform pipelines, there's a lot of things you can do. So now that I've done that, the next thing that I need to do is make sure that my environments have been switched to the enhanced data model. Remember, we need this to add a website to a solution and then be able to move our solutions from one environment to the other. You need to do this in both the developer environment and in your test environment. So both the source and destination environments, make sure you do that. Even if you don't have any Power Pages sites deployed like I do currently in my test environment, um, turn on to switch the enhanced data model. All right, next thing I'm going to do in my dev site, I've already provisioned a Power Apps, or Power Apps Portal, Power Pages site. I mean, you know, name changes, won't go there. So let's actually go in and let's edit this particular site. Let's make some changes. So I'm going to go into the Design Studio and see, I've already made some changes. I've changed the background color, I've changed the heading, I've used the text. Now notice a new thing, Copilot. I'm not gonna make a video specifically on Copilots just yet because there's some more stuff coming, but here's where I can use Copilots and change some of that text and some of that content within my web page. And then the other thing that Copilots is now available for us is the ability to add forms, the natural language to forms. Um, I still recommend you go into data workspace, you create your data model, you plan that out and you create your tables there. But this is something we can do. So I'm adding a form here and we, we can go and describe that form. What that will do, it will create your dataverse tables, those uh, columns for one table only, and then create a form, corresponding form to go along with that. So that's going to save you a lot of steps. But again, this is called co-pilot, not pilot. So you're still going to need to know how all of this stuff works. How, webs and form, how web forms works, how basic forms work, all of these things, how it works with Dataverse in order to use this effectively. So it's just a tool, um, definitely gonna save you some time, but remember, you're still gonna need to know your stuff. But we're not here to talk about co-pilots in this video. I'll do another video down the road on co-pilots when it covers a few more areas. For now, let's go back to our deployment using Power Platform Pipelines to move sites from one to another. So I've made changes to the site, I'm happy with that changes to the home page and now let's go into the power pages home page let's go into solutions and i've already created a solution called test website now what i need to do is is add my site to that solution so it's currently empty what i'm going to need to do is go into the add existing And from here, we see have an entry called site. This will only appear if you have the enhanced data model and you have a site that uses an enhanced model data template. We do, no problem. I'm adding my entire site now to that solution. All right, solutions now been added. We see all the site components have been added. When I talk about site components, I'm meaning things like web pages, root pages, content pages, content snippets, site settings, everything that we do to configure our portal is now part of that solution. This is great. Now what we need to do is move this over to our environment. What we can do is we click on the little rocket ship that's gonna use the pipelines. I'm gonna pick the pipeline that I've set up earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that solution and we're gonna deploy it to our test environment. Pretty simple. Before we would have to go through a lot of hoops and a lot of steps to make this happen. 
Using solutions, it's a lot easier. So we've done this. Now let's hit the deployment, deploy here. And what this is going to do is going to get some additional setup in terms of the pipeline, whether we want to do it now or we want to schedule it for later. I don't know. I'm impatient. Let's do it now. Why not? Let's hit the next button. And now what's going to do is it's going to prepare and kick off for us to deploy that solution from our development to our test site. It'd be good to add some notes here for your future self. What's this solution all about? And we just hit deploy and then we wait. Now this is probably going to take quite a bit of time. It's the same amount of time as it would if you're exporting and importing that solution manually. But now this is all taking care of it for you. So now let's wait a few minutes as it moves the solution over. All right, so it looks like that solution's been deployed from our dev to our test. So let's go check out our test site just to see that solution, what happened there. So we're gonna flip environments. I'm gonna to go to my test and we don't have any sites in that environment. Like, wait a minute, we moved that solution over. Why isn't the site showing up here? This is a step we're gonna to have to do manually. We're going to have to manually configure a site, but we wanna use that portal data that we moved over in the solution. We know we moved it over the solution. If I take a look at the solutions, I see my test website is there, but let's go back to the homepage. Now let's look at the inactive sites. There it is. There is our site. And here we're gonna to have to click on the reactivate button in order to deploy that site. Now, the other thing we're gonna to need to do is configure the web address because we already use that in our dev environment. So now we're gonna to have to change this for our test. So I'm just gonna add test here, easy peasy. We know that URL is now unique. Again, we can always change this later into an actual uh, URL. And now we're activating that site. It's using that metadata that we brought over in the solution file. So we do, again, we don't have to worry about a lot of extra configuration. It's now done for us and it's gonna configure that site. All right, this has now been deployed. So let's actually go in and to the design studio all right, we're in the design studio. We see those changes. Those are the, those are this is the site that we created in our dev, but now we're in test. Let's take a look. And there is our Power Pages site deployed using pipelines. Amazing. It didn't take us that long. This is something that even a few years ago would have been a lot more painful. We would have had to use either some community tools, which are great by the way, or we would have had to use some other methods to move that portal configuration from one site to another. Now, next thing, what if we want to make some changes? We know websites change on a like a daily basis sometimes. How can we deploy that? Do we make changes into our tests and production directly? No, of course not. We're going to go into our dev site again, and we're going to make a few adjustments and changes here. So let's go in. We're going to change the company from ABC company to something like XYZ company. We've done that change. Um, let's change the styling a little bit. Let's make our one of the background colors uh, blue. So I'm going to change that from the red to a blue. I'm just going to pick something randomly here. Of course, in a real situation, I'd be working with the marketing people to make sure we have our brand colors correct and all that kind of stuff. We're going to make some changes there. And now let's just change some of the text as well. All right. I said I was going to use Copilot earlier. Let's use the Copilot. Let's make some changes. Let's change the tone to be a little bit more professional than friendly. Copilot's going to go in and make that change. Uh, let's let's rewrite that. This looks a little lame. Try that again. Copilot will make us new changes. Once we're happy, we can add it. And of course, we can edit that ourselves. We've made some changes. We've changed the header. We've changed the background. We've changed some text. Pretty basic stuff. If we could also, we could add new pages, new menu items. So we could just do regular development stuff using Power Pages. Now, let's go back into our solutions now. This is a critical step. If we just move the solution as is, we're gonna get updates, but we're not gonna get all the new items we might have added. So what you're gonna to need to do is go into your site in your solution and then go through and select your site and then add required objects. It's going to go through and add anything that we've added, let's say new pages, new content snippets using the Design Studio or the Portal Management app. We're going to want to add those to our solution to make sure that those changes get moved across. This is probably going to be a step that people are going to forget. So again, remember to do this each time you're going to want to deploy. Unfortunately, this is something we're going to have to manually kind of do. Hopefully with pipelines, we can do some automation to do this step for you as part of that to automate that. But for now, this is something that you're going to have to do manually. 
and we've successfully added those required objects, easy peasy. So now that we've done that, then we basically do the exact same thing we did before. We go into our pipelines, we pick our Power Pages pipeline. This is the exact same way you do it if you're doing Power Apps or Power Automate, moving things from a dev to test. Um, I don't need to kind of go too deeply into this. This looks pretty straightforward. We're gonna deploy it now and it's gonna go through the motions and move that stuff over into the destination environment. Looks good, let's deploy it. Okay, so we've seen it's been deployed over to our destination environment. I'm gonna flip over to the test environment. Let's gonna take a look at that. And let's go into the design studio just to make sure that our changes did move across. Now notice we didn't have um, to reactivate that site. It's already been there because that site's now lined up. And if we go in, yep, yeah, we see our changes, the background being changed to blue, XYZ company, plus that text has been updated. So basically a couple things to remember. When we're deploying, we need to make sure we've turned on the enhanced data model on both sides. We're going to need to make sure that we've added everything to the solution. And then after we deploy it over the first time, first time only, we're gonna to have to reactivate the site to set up that host. And then after that, anytime we've added something to the site, we're gonna to have to remember to add those components to the solution manually. And then we can run through that deployment pipeline again. Still, maybe not exactly perfect in an ALM world, but we've moved a long way than we, even where we were even a few months ago with PowerPages ALM. So really looking forward to hearing how this works out for you, and hopefully this makes your whole ALM process with PowerPages a lot smoother. So hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm gonna just gonna keep making them if you keep watching them. Have a great day.